which one? You know the one, the one where you're a trolley car driver, and up ahead you see five workers working on the tracks. You try to stop, but the brake is broken. The only thing you can do is turn right, but on that side of the track there is one worker also working. What do you do? Oh yeah, no, no, I remember that. But the correct answer is, I would flip the trolley so I don't hit anyone. Ah, well, well, you would die. Steven's a philosophical thinker here. Wait, so you would sacrifice yourself to save others? Well, I mean, like, just because a trolley car tips doesn't mean I'll die. It's easier for me to live. But how would you tip a trolley car? Like, start doing that <laughs> motion left and right just really fast? Yeah, no, no, like the Pirates of the Caribbean thing. Yeah, uh, but, okay. Go let's, side to side. Let's say you can't do that and you have to pick one, either five or one. What would you do? Would you turn right, kill that one for the five? Oh yeah, obviously. One person is less valuable than five. But then again, if it's like a cancer doctor versus five KKK members, then I'll totally keep going straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here. I think so. Yeah, I think that's how the majority of the people would answer. But let's say this time, it's the same situation, but you're an onlooker, and you're on the sidelines of a trial car, and you're about to see the five workers die. Now you feel helpless, but on your right, you notice a very fat man leaning over. All you would need to do is give a gentle shove for him to fall down and crash, and he would get hit by the trolley car, he would die, but stop the car and save the five workers. Would you do it? Well, I mean, like, if it takes just a simple push, then he's not very fat. <laughs> um, no, he's already leaning over. Like, he's like, he's really interested in he this whole thing. He's asking for it. Oh my what god. <laughs> he's, he's watching people die. Yeah, he's gonna die. You want to push him over? Oh, just because he was leaning over? Yeah, that means he's, like, so invested in their deaths. No, maybe he's panicking. Like... Maybe he's screaming. He himself has done nothing wrong. You don't know anything about him. Do you push him over? Okay, so that's uh, that's actually a better question. Um, I'd still push them over. I mean, like, if it saves people, like, why not? Interesting. <sighs> what about you, Wilson? <sighs> Blood on your hand. What's so, then? Hydrogen peroxide will take it off, don't worry. Yeah, that makes it much, much better, doesn't it? Uh, I'll probably have to just be a bystander and not do anything. Uh, that makes me a bad person. <laughs> okay, so the dilemma is this. What changed from the first question to the second one? You're physically involved in it? Yeah. We're physically killing a person. That's the big difference. You're still physically killing a person on the other side. The difference is we're ending some guy's lives. He could have lived a perfectly happy life without us, but instead we just killed him. Isn't that the same situation for the other worker on the other track? No, because we have pretty much no control over the trolley car other than going left or right. It's already going to kill somebody. Oh, actually, wait. Okay, so people will usually say, this makes it too personal. And then the next question rises. Let's say this time you're a doctor in an emergency room. There are six patients that come to you. They've been in a terrible trolley car accident. Five of them are moderately injured, but one of them are very severely injured. You can spend all day on the severely injured and he will live, but the five will die. And if you care for the five moderately injured, the one will die. What would you do? This is Canada. I know. Where are all the other doctors? <laughs> <laughs> That's the real question. Well, hypothetically, let's say it's somewhere else. Okay, so... Uh, mm, obviously the five. Yeah, same here. So say this time you're an organ transplant surgeon. Five patients come, and each of them are in desperate need of an organ transplant in order to survive. One needs a heart, one a lung, one a liver, a kidney, and the fifth, a pancreas. But you're out of organs to donate. But it occurs to you, in the next room, there's a healthy guy who's in, a, in for a checkup. And he's taking a nap. You could, you could go in quietly, yank out five of the organs, and that person would die, but you can save the five. Would you do it? Yeah. First, that goes against the doctor's code. I so, agree. Yeah, no. So, the yeah. lawsuit's coming your way. No, let's say, okay, let's say you can get away with everything. Well, then I wouldn't stop at this murder. I'd keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, think about this. You know, let's be serious for a second. If you were in this situation with only this question, what would be your answer? I wouldn't do anything. Exactly. That's, yeah, absolutely irresponsible. How dare you value the life of those other five people over that one other guy? I guess the reason why we're kind of struggling to answer this is because we've answered the previous questions. Mm -hmm. I guess, but honestly, 
Just the fact that the guy has done nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with him. We're pretty much killing a healthy person whose only crime is to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. I mean, like, that's kind of the same with the fat guy. Okay, so I feel like there's no such thing as right or wrong. Because if you look at history, something that used to be thought as right now is completely immoral. So when I look at these questions, the only way I would answer these by would be by ethics that the society taught me or the way I feel. You know what I mean? Interesting. That might cause people to think of me as a bad person, but... <laughs> you know, these questions are from a professor named Michael Sanders from Harvard University. It's his series called Justice. He has like 10 lectures about all of these moral dilemmas. I'll put the link in the description. You guys should definitely check it out. But basically, it's teaching new law students that come to Harvard that life is never black or white. You know, some laws depend on the situation. And as future lawyers and judges, one must be able to analyze all different aspects and make proper decisions. Do you get it? Because I freaking don't. Yeah, no, no, definitely the law is up for interpretation in some parts of it. And I think with these kind of questions, it's just teaching people to think differently from a different perspective. This Michael Sandel dude, I would love to talk to him in person. He talks about cannibalism, you know, but is it actually wrong? He talks about everything, it's amazing. Ugh. Speaking of cannibalism, <laughs> if you want to watch this video over here, we talk about cannibalism. On this video right here? Click on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you like this video, leave a comment to tell us what we should talk about next. And maybe we will. Or we won't. I mean, like, there's 2,000 of you guys okay, right bye, now. Okay, bye, 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 guys. <laughs> bye, guys. I want to play.